Yes, guys, we're back. We're back. Hope everybody's enjoying the start of the week, even though I know it's a Monday. Not a lot of people like Mondays, but big up to everybody, wherever you guys are watching from. Be it the morning, afternoon, night, it's near evening here in England, but... I don't know, in the US, it's probably like early morning or something like that. Regardless, big up to everybody that's in here. Hit the like button, subscribe and all of that shit. We're here to talk about, i say the latest transfer news. There's a couple topics to get into. We're monitoring Mignon's contract situation, which is intriguing. Slightly intriguing, only slightly, but we'll talk about that. Um, there's Varat Shelia links as well. Well... There's Fabrizio silencing Varicelli links. He said that, that Chelsea have no contact with Varicelli, also because they protect Mudrik and they believe he'll be an important part of the present and the future. And Chelsea really believe in Mudrik, which makes sense. And I didn't really expect us to have any serious links for him. Like going for Oshimen from Napoli is one thing, but trying to take both of their star players in the same year and I say the same year because I maintain my stance that I don't think it's realistic for us to get Oshimen in January. I think it's a lot more realistic to get him in the summer with one year left. But to try and get him and Varat Shelia, you got to be offering something crazy in the reverse trade. you got to be offering Sterling going the other way or maybe Mudrik or somebody else. And we're not going to let Mudrik go. We didn't spend £62 million on Mudrik just to get rid of him within a season and a half. We're not going to do that. And yes, it is 62 million for all the dickheads who want to run the 100 million spent on Mudrick narrative. No, he's not 100 million. He's he's not even 100 million if he reaches his add-ons, I think. So I, I don't understand the waffle. Oh, wait, it's rival fans. So of course they're waffling. But yeah, no Barrett Shelley links. They never made sense in the first place. I think Varat Shelia re-signed the contract with Napoli anyway. So you're paying about 500 million from Napoli if you're going for him. Because that's how stingy these guys are. That's how hard they are to negotiate. And that's why I also don't really believe we're getting Oshimen in January. You can try. Maybe for a brochure the other way. But I keep saying, send Lukaku Napoli in the summer and bring in Oshimen. That is the plan, and that is what would make a lot of sense. You throw them a proven Serie A goal scorer, they don't have to look for a replacement. Or, if they just want Broja, peace, Armando. It's been real, my guy. It's been real. But no about Shelly links. But let's go into the main topic of this video, which is discipline. Another game and another red card. Two on the bounce and two red cards for our captains in two games. Like, I saw this stat come up on the timeline today and it's it's very alarming very alarming this is the top of the table for yellow cards we are top of the league let's go finally top of the league out of, of something of something i can drop a little sue for that come on but yeah 47 yellow cards in about 13 games that isn't good that isn't good at all. Now, I can only be annoyed about this to a certain point because at least it seems showing fight. Like, it's more than can be said for the bastards that we had last season. Last season, we had a bunch of pansies that would give up at the first sign of any issue. And half of them didn't even want to be here anyway, so they weren't playing that 100% to begin with. At least we have a crop of players that are fighting for the shirt. At least we have a crop of players that want to be here. At least we have a crop of players that are showing some desire and some intensity. Now, we just need some discipline on top of that. Because we're showing an extreme lack of discipline. We're showing naivety in the game. And we showed that in spades yesterday. Conor Gallagher. Should have done so much better, especially when we're 2-0 up and we're in a comfortable position in the game. When the defence isn't even caught out of position and you have to put a tactical foul. You're jumping up above the ball to tackle a player on a yellow. It's stupid. It's naive. It's it's ridiculous. It's, it's so petty. But it's, it's something that we're used to with Conor Gallagher. I don't want to isolate it just to him, even though... He's the first person to get two yellow cards in a half since he did it a year ago. I don't want to just isolate him because this is a team problem. Quietly, this is something that Poch needs to improve on in the team. 
because his sides have always been said to lack discipline. We've seen it with PSG. Just off the top of my head, I remember when they got knocked out by Man City in the semi-final. Second leg, these men lost their heads. Um, Tottenham, Battle of the Bridge, I'm sure we remember that. What happened there? Lost their heads. It, it's, it's a very key factor that's been associated with Poch teams in the past. And lo and behold, we get to this season. Now we got, we're top of yellow cards. We're trying to beef everybody. And we seem to have taken on the emotional mindset that Pochettino has. So I want to see that improve in the team. But again, it's not just isolated to Poch either. Poch is an emotional manager, but Gallagher runs around like an XL bully regardless of the manager. We saw that with Tuchel last year. James is always prone to doing petulant shit and getting yellow cards and getting into scraps. And to be honest, getting into scraps has just become a team thing in the last few games. I've seen Cole will get into arguments. I've seen Enzo getting into arguments. I've seen the likes of Cucurella getting into arguments. Nicholas Jackson w was already being highlighted in the first few games for arguing with the ref too much. Poch told him not to do it, and then he got a fifth yellow card, and, then, and that was for arguing with the ref as well. It's a key problem with us. Like... Nicholas Jackson is top of the league for yellow cards with seven. Enzo and Sterling are on four. They're one yellow away from suspension. Cucurella is already on five. That's why he missed the last game. Palmer and somehow Chilwell is on three yellow cards. Chilwell's barely played. I, I don't even get that one, but well, actually, no, I do because that guy is so rash defensively. But that's just topic for another day. That's a topic for another day. This is a team problem. It's fine to a point because like, I do understand the inexperienced side of things and that does play a part into all of the naivety and the silly yellow cards. Like, there is, It's a different level now and these players are still adjusting to it. And, and that's okay. That's fine. But we need to control it better because here's where my worry is. My worry is that if we don't improve on this, this is going to become something that we're well known for. We're well known for losing our heads. And then that can be used against us. Teams can try to rile us up and we'll just start kicking out, giving away stupid fouls, arguing with the ref, getting a bunch of yellow cards and probably a player sent off. I could really see that shit happening in a big game for us against a team with a stronger mentality, a team with a smarter mentality, and a team that sees that we have problems in terms of keeping our heads. That is a worrying thing for me. Hopefully, no team capitalizes on that. But for now, let's just work on it. Let's, le let's learn to keep our heads cool a little bit, especially when we're in winning positions. Like, I, I can understand it as frustrating as it is. I can understand it when we're in a losing position and the players have just lost their heads and it's just pure head loss. I could get that a bit more. When you're 2-0 up and we are doing the same shit, Come on, guys. We are literally winning the damn game. What are we doing? That's where we need to be better at. Discipline needs to improve. That's going to be on Poch. That's going to be on the players. I've seen Conor Gallagher apologize. I've seen James apologize. Saw Gusto's apology and all of that. That's fine as long as it doesn't happen again. If Gallagher moves a lot smarter off the ball and a lot smarter with his tackles, cool. We don't care. If I see him get stupid yellow cards when he's back again and he does this shit, then no, now it's starting to become a problem for me. Um, just before we wrap up, we do still need to talk about the Mignon news. Chelsea, United, Bayern and PSG are carefully following the contract negotiations between Mike Mignon and AC Milan. Mignon wants to stay. However, he's looking for a significantly increased salary. This is from Santi JFM and Seb Nonda. So I think they are French sources. Let me just double check quickly. Um, bear with me for a sec while I just make sure. So Santi JFM, he's works for Paris United. So yeah, that's a French source. Seb Nonda, another French source. All right, cool. Oh, Sebastian Denise, that's his name. Seb Nonda's his Twitter name. Okay, cool. But yeah. This is a sort of goalkeeper that I'm okay with us going for. Like, all those Ramsdale links were scary. They were frightening. But going from Mignon, that's a game-changing goalkeeper. That's an experienced signing. That is a move that makes absolute sense. It's minor links only because... 
they're following the contract negotiations and Mignon wants to stay. And for Chelsea's perspective as well, we need to make Europe before we even really talk about trying to get a player like Mignon. Mignon didn't want to join us last year because we weren't in Europe. So get back into Europe and, yeah, maybe we can have these conversations. As of right now, we have to see what happens with the contract situation. And until then, we have to do our job. That's all I can ask of Chelsea. Do your job and we will be fine. But, yeah, that's the end of the video. Big up to everybody that's locked in. Stay tuned for tomorrow. we got a double stream coming up. Um, 12 p.m. midday UK time. We're going to be doing a FIFA preview with Saeed, so keep a lookout for that. And then we've got the panel preview. We're going to have Flawless rolling through. I'm going to get another United fan as well. That should be around a normal time. So stay tuned. Lots of footage coming through this week. Big up to everybody that's locked in. Hit the like button, subscribe, and all of that shit. And as always, up the Chels. Up the Chels.